Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and this week we are going to be looking at breakfast. And breakfast is of course my beetle weight combat robot made out of a toaster. Uh, so this guy you guys have seen on this channel already. Uh, it had a couple of fights when we were fighting a TV show, uh, fighting for a TV show, which hasn't been released yet. I will of course tell you guys when that happens. Um, but it had a few issues in that original setup. So uh, the first and foremost is that this uh, weapon bar actually contacted the sides and hit the aluminium brackets that I had holding everything together and also snapped off a big section here. If I flick this around the other side, you can see it's normally supposed to extend out like this, but it is not because it got hit by the weapon. Now, that is for two reasons. One, the tolerance here is a little bit tight and also two, the weapon actually has a little bit of give in it because the CNC machine that I used to cut this, I am not great with CNC machines yet and the tolerances were off. So this hole up the top here is uh, too big. It's just much larger than it needs to be, which means that it wobbles around a lot, which means that the weapon could hit these brackets at the back here. So the first thing we're gonna do today is we're going to completely remove these two little things and get rid of these brackets because even without them there, the chassis is rock solid, which is really nice. And of course, I'm going to cut a brand new top plate with the hole the right size, which means that this whole weapon system won't wobble as much as it does now, because there is a really good vertical spinner in my beetle weight league, which means that I can't have this wobble happening because it is gonna hit some internal components, or at least, it does at the moment. Like I said, I'm trying to remove as much stuff as I can from this weapon path just to be on the safe side. Now, the other thing that happened was we were using these plastic geared um, motors for the drive last time round, and this was a bad idea. These things are normally only held in with a little like plasticky clip that goes across the top holding the motors in place, but that interfered with the fit of them, so I had to remove that plasticky clip and use hot glue instead, and that uh, didn't work so well. This one here did manage to survive, but the other one, which is somewhere in my house right now, uh, the motor got ripped out at one point or another, and that meant that I lost drive. So these things are terrible. I probably not, should not have gone with these in the first place, but uh, they were there and it was a quick an easy way to do that build, so I went with those. Today we're going to be going back to these motors, which are like a knockoff Silver Spark motor. Now I've used these before in not again the drum spinning robot, and they shattered. So this time round in this robot, we're going to use these, but we're going to belt drive from the actual motor output to the wheel, so that we don't have any force on this motor. And I also think I'll use some styrofoam, uh, not styrofoam, yeah, well hips high impact styrofoam uh, board to mount these to the chassis. So this has got a bit, little bit of give in it. When it's at a smaller scale, it's got a little bit less give, but that is gonna help protect these motors a lot more and hopefully mean that I don't lose drive this time. Losing drive is kind of, I think the biggest issue I'm facing in, I'm facing in beetle weights. I've never built a robot that hasn't lost drive for a beetle weight. So, yeah, I think we're going to, uh, we'll get started on all of this stuff. I was going to CNC the brand new top plate, however, that is not gonna happen anymore because I busted the CNC machine making this top plate last time round, and I didn't realize how bad it was until I pulled it out five minutes ago and tried to fire it up, and it didn't work very well. Uh, so I've got some repairs to do on that, which means today we will not be using the CNC, we'll be using jigsaws and hacksaws and all of that good stuff. All right, let's get started on some builds.
And there we go. It works. Kind of, sort of, maybe. Um, yeah, so the actual system itself in the back here, it looks really cool and it does indeed work. It does uh, have the motors turn the wheels. However, I am actually now torque restricted to the uh, torque in the belt or how much the belt slips or doesn't slip essentially. So I've gone through a whole bunch of different types of uh, belts in here and these ones so far are the only ones that even get this thing to drive forwards. However, as you saw, I was driving uh, in unencased mode, so I didn't have the actual toaster on, which meant that it was uh, trying to drive along on this bolt head down here. That's where a lot of the weight is held, uh, which is not great. When it actually has the toaster on it, it's sliding around on some nice slick plastic up the front here. So that will actually help a little bit when it goes into the arena for the first time. Um, yeah, at the end of the day, like I said, it does work and I, I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not. We're going to have to wait and see how the fights go, uh, very, very soon. I know this video has been a little bit choppy and changey, uh, that's because I've got a few very big robots that I'm currently working on building right now. Uh, so they've been the focus. This guy's kind of just been a little bit more like, oh, I need to get a new drive system on before the fights. Um, so... Yeah, this guy kind of has been a bit more of a rush than he probably should have been, but that's the way this goes from time to time. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one, and yeah, next week we will have the fight for this and also the ring spinner. So uh, if you aren't subscribed, please do subscribe and check that video out next week because we'll actually see how well both this drive and the brand new ring spinner do. So hope to see you there, and I will see you in the next video.